वेलकम बैक डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो आज हम कंटिन्टी को क्लास कंटिन्ू करते वी आर गोइंग टू सी दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम सो क्वेश्चन इज टेस्ट द कंटिन्टी अफ द फंक्शन नाउ फंक्शन कंटिन्स कि डिस्कटिन्स वी नीड टू चेक नाउ एट विच पॉइंट भादा फंक्शन ब्रेक कहने भैर एट x equals to zero. So basically, at x equals to zero, I am going to check the continuity of this particular function. Now we know that the necessary condition for a function to be continuous is left hand limit must be equals to right hand limit, and this must be equals to functional value. Okay. That whenever you have this kind of case, not equal to, zani da punsa, tere yella left hand limit or right hand limit. फाइन नगर दुईटा एकचोटि फाइन कर सकता ओके एंड एज आई सेड ओलियो यह दुईटा कंबाइन कर लिमिट एक्सटेन्स टू सी एफ एक्स लेखन सकता ओके सो बेसिकली यहाँ मेफ्ट हैंड लिमिट और राइट हैंड लिमिट फाइन नगर आई एम गोइंग टू फाइन दिस वन एंड आई एम गोइंग टू फाइन दिस वन सो लेट्स चेक व्हाट इज द वैल्यू अफ दिस एंड व्हाट इज द वैल्यू अफ दिस ओके सो आई हेव लिमिट एक्सटेन्स टू सी सी बन यहाँ क्या जीरो एफ एक्स इक्वल्स टू नाउ लेट्स सी व्हाट इज द वैल्यू अफ फंक्शन नाउ एक्स इज गोइंग टुवर्ड्स जीरो इसको अर्थ एक्स इज गोइंग टुवर्ड्स द जीरो बट द वैल्यू अफ एक्स इज नट इक्वल्स टू जीरो अलमोस्ट इक्वल टू जीरो होता तर इक्वल टू हो एक्जैक्टली राइट सो इफ एक्स इज नट इक्वल्स टू जीरो देन द वैल्यू अफ माई फंक्शन बिकम्स दिस मच राइट सो दैट्स वाई आई कैन राइट लिमिट एक्स टेन्स टू जीरो एफ एक्स को जगह में एक्स स्क्वेर साइन वन बाई x ठीक है ना लेट इस पुट बैक द वैल्यू ऑफ x या सो जब मैं x को वैल्यू लाऊं तो देन आई हैव लिमिट x टेंस टू जीरो ओके सो व्हेन एवर यू आर पुटिंग वैल्यू ऑफ x टू बी जीरो देन यू नीड नॉट राइट दिस सो यू हैव जीरो स्क्वेयर इनटू साइन वन बाय x बनी को दिस है जीरो ओके ना जीरो स्क्वेयर इस जीरो तो टाइम लाइट हासर बट व्हाट अबाउट दिस व्हाट इस द वैल्यू ऑफ साइन ऑफ वन बाय जीरो एंड व्हाट इस वन बाय जीरो वन बाय जीरो इस इनफिनिटी सो बेसिकली दिस इस जीरो स्क्वेयर इस जीरो इनटू दिस इस साइन ऑफ इनफिनिटी सो वी नीड टू फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ साइन इनफिनिटी नाउ मोस्ट ऑफ यू इट इज नॉट सो हाउ लेट्स सी थ्रू द ग्राफ अफ साइन फंक्शन नौ हम एक्स एक्सिस में के प्लट कर भादा एंगल्स प्लट कर सो वी हेज साइन ग्राफ कस्त होता ये टाइप का होता राइट सो दिस माई जीरो डिग्री दिस माई पाई दिस वन एटी दिस माई टू पाई ओके नाउ दिस विल बी माई पाई बाई टू क्योंकि पाई बाई टू में मेरे वैल्यू कई अभी दिस इज माई थ्री पाई बाई टू एंड थ्री पाई बाई टू में मेरे वैल्यू कई माइनस वन ओके सो दिस इज द ग्राफ अफ साइन फंक्शन सो वाई इक्व टू साइन एक्स ग्राफ से यो नाउ एक्स एक्सिस में हमें के प्लट कर वी आर प्लटिंग एंगल्स राइट सो बेसिकली दिस इज अल्सो एंगल फॉर मी ओके एंड वे डज दिस एंगल लाई सो यह एंगल से कहने भादा ये सो इन्फिनिटी यपटी जानूपर् सो मै इन्फिनिटी लाइज समवेर ओवर देर ओके सो तिमी एंगल जी लिया ओके सो हम चेब एंगल्स यू आर टेकिंग यू कैन सी दैट द वैल्यू अफ साइन इज लाइंग इन बिट्विन माइनस वन टू वन राइट बने एट इन्फिनिटी अल्सो द वैल्यू अफ साइन इज लाइंग इन बिट्विन माइनस वन एंड वन ओके दैट्स वाई द वैल्यू अफ दिस इज अल्सो अ फाइनाइट वैल्यू सो दिस इज अल्सो अ फाइनाइट वैल्यू इन बिट्विन इन बिट्विन माइनस वन एंड वन ओके एंड इस मान लि तो भैल्यू क्या होता से के ओके सो दैट्स वाई दिस कैन बिटिन एस जीरो इंटू साइन इन्फिनिटी होने कति रहे के एंड व्हाट इज जीरो इंटू के इक्व टू इट इज जीरो सो मेरे लिमिट को भैल्यू क्या आदि जीरो नाउ आई हेव फाउंड एफ दिस पार्ट लेट मी चेक व्हाट इज एफ अफ सी नाउ एफ अफ सी मीन्स एफ अफ जीरो राइट सो दैट मीन्स एक्स को भैल्यू क्या जीरो सो वेन एवर एक्स इज जीरो व्हाट इज द वैल्यू अफ फंक्शन फंक्शन को वैल्यू कति होता है जीरो सो डाइरेक्टली एफ अफ जीरो कति जीरो नाउ वी सी दैट वी सी दैट वी सी दैट लिमिट एक्सटेन्स टू जीरो एफ एक्स रफ अफ जीरो बोथ आर सेम ओके एंड बोथ आर जीरो नाउ व्हाट इज द मिनिंग ऑफ दिस द मिनिंग ऑफ दिस इज दैट द फंक्शन एफ इज कंटिन्स एट 
x equals to 0. So pause the video to note down. Okay, now let's see the solution for this particular question. Here, function is already given and it is again a split function. And it is said that if fx is continuous, so it is already said that the function is continuous at x equals to 0. Basically here, the function is splitting at x equals to 0. So there only we need to, we have been showed that function is continuous. Now we need to find the value of alpha. So here we have alpha. Now to solve this kind of problem, you should be very very thorough with your class 11 limits chapter. Okay, so, and if you don't know the use or the how to solve limits problem, then the problem becomes very difficult for you. Okay, now it is already given that the function is continuous, right? So since f is continuous at x equals to 0, now function being continuous means what? It means limit x tends to c fx equals to f of c right this is the meaning this means left hand limit and right hand limit are equal and i am taking only one because here we have not equals to sign okay so uh, both cases left hand limit and right hand limit has been combined in this now what is the value of c the value of c is zero so let me make it zero okay now let us put the formula so we have limit x tends to 0 now what is the value of fx make sure that x is not equal to 0 x is going towards 0 but x is not equal to 0 so x not equal to 0 means my function value will be this one so that's why instead of fx I'm writing 1 minus cos of alpha x by x sine x okay is equals to f of 0 that means when x is equals to 0 what is the value of function so it will be equals to how much half so basically we need to solve this limiting problem to find the value of alpha okay now let's see um, so we have cos alpha x here right so can I write this as cos of 2 into alpha x by 2 yeah, definitely we can write yes but we have 1 minus cos alpha x here so 1 minus so basically this can be written as this one yes and if I call this as theta this full thing as theta then I have 1 minus cos 2 theta which in turn can be written as 2 sine squared theta yes which is alpha x by so these are just the formula so the same formula I'm going to put out here so we have limit x tends to 0 so instead of this I'm writing 2 sine square alpha x by 2 okay and we have x sine x equals to half now I'm going to divide both numerator and denominator by x square because uh, there's a very famous formula which says limit x tends to 0 sine x by x will be equals to 1 so this is very famous formula from your class 11 now since there is square okay so there is square so to make sine x by x I'll divide both numerator and denominator by x square okay let me take off this two common so if this two comes outside and when I divide both numerator and denominator by x square I have sine squared alpha x by 2 by x squared whole divided by we have x sine x by x square right so this is equals to half now okay now here if you have x then you have you should have x here to get one in the answer but we don't we have x here but here we have something else okay so we'll try to make this and this same so if i do that i need to do some man manipulation so let's see what manipulation am i doing so we have limit x tends to zero so this can be written as sine square alpha x by two okay 
divided by so let me write it alpha x by 2 whole square but there I put something extra that is alpha by 2 whole square so to balance this I will multiply here by alpha by 2 whole square so that alpha by 2 whole square and alpha by 2 whole square gets cancelled and only x square is left okay so we have this 2 and this 2 I am sending down there okay so this 2 goes there and becomes 1 by 4 here okay and let me distribute this limit here and here as well because we know that limit extends to c f x by g x can be written as limit extends to c f x by limit extends to c g x so if i do that if i distribute this limit then this can be written as okay so this and this are also getting answered so we have limit x tends to 0 sin x by x in the denominator okay now this is a constant term it does not contain any x right the variable is x so this can be taken outside so let me write my solution out here so we have alpha by 2 whole square okay and now if x is going towards 0 then what happens to this if x is going towards 0 then obviously alpha x by 2 also goes to 0 so that's why instead of this I can write alpha x by 2 so here we have limit alpha x by 2 tends to 0 and this can be written as sine alpha x by 2 by alpha x by 2 whole square divided by this is 1 and this whole thing is equals to 1 by 4 right and obviously the value of this is also 1 value of this is also 1 yes because this square can be split because this means if this a then a square means a into a so that's why this limit can be distributed because we know that limit extends to z or uh, c fx into gx can be written as limit extends to c fx into limit extends to c gx so if this is a square if then this is a and a so a, a into a is a square so this can be split in this manner and each of them will be one one okay so one into one is again one so that's why this gives me alpha by 2 whole square equals to this much okay so let me take square root on both sides then if i take square root okay first of all, let me solve this this way so alpha square by 4 can be written as 1 by 4 so alpha square is 1 so therefore what is the value of alpha so the value of alpha is plus minus 1 because when i take the square root i will have plus minus so this is the answer so pause the video to note down now we'll see this problem in this question again the function is given to be continuous at x equals to 1 okay but here they are asking about two unknowns a and b okay now we don't have not equals to sign here so that's why we have to find both left hand limit and right hand limit in this case okay so let's find what is my left hand limit so left hand limit is limit x tends to 1 plus or minus it will be minus because here we are checking at x equals to 1 so that's why my 1 minus fx now x is approaching to 1 so suppose if this is my 1 then x is approaching 1 but from where frame from left side because it is left hand limit okay so obviously whichever x is this this x is going to be less than 1 so less than 1 means this case right so that's why my functional value will be this much so this can be written as limit x tends to 1 okay remove this minus now so functional value will be 5 ax minus 2b and let me put the value of x then i will get 5a into 1 minus 2b x is 1 so instead of uh, x i have written 1 so 5a into 1 is 5a minus 2b so this is the value of my left hand limit
now let me find right hand limit so right hand limit definition says limit x tends to 1 plus fx so x is going towards 1 from right side okay so if this is my x then this x is obviously greater than 1 so x is greater than 1 means this case right so whenever we go to this case the function value becomes 3ax plus b so that's why we have limit x tends to this becomes 1 and fx becomes 3ax plus b now let, let me put the value of x so we have 3a into x is 1 plus b and this is equal to 3a plus b so i found a left hand limit and right hand limit but we need to find the function value that is fc as well right so we have fc and c is how much one here so f1 so that means the value of x is one so whenever x is one then the function value will be 11 okay now since the function is continuous at x equals to 1 then we know that left hand limit will be equals to right hand limit and this will be equals to functional value okay since f is continuous at x equals to 1 then we must have left hand limit equals to right hand limit and this will be equals to functional value so functional value is f of 1 that is what is LHL LHL is 5a minus 2b okay equals to what is RHL RHL is 3a plus b and what what is f of 1 f of 1 is 11 so from here we get two equations that is 5a minus 2b equals to 11 and 3a plus b is equals to 11 you call this as equation 1 you call this as equation 2 and solve 1 and 2 okay which is very very easy now solving 1 and 2 you'll get a equals to you'll get a equals to 3 and b equals to 2 so pause the video to note down okay so before we have our next problems I would like to introduce to you all with something called compositional functions. the first chapter relation and function mouse okay but uh, we need the use of this as well in this particular chapter. So that's why I'm going to give you a brief introduction about compositional functions. Now many know this is my set A, this is my B and this is my set C. Now I am defining two different functions. One function is from a to b and let me call this as f so basically f is a function from a to b okay now from b to c i am defining another function and let me call this as g so g is a function from b to c except now uh, i am going to take one element x out here except so your f let's say your x let's say x like transfer and element and we call that element to be fx okay and it's like I mean image of x under f okay fx is also known as image of x under f which you might have learned in your class 11 okay and you fx line I'm given sir y banana one son and you g and g let's say g let's say g let's say you y like t pair say is giving one new element here and this is called gy okay when she have your gy when you see this here right so we have gy gy when you say get a seven i say it can be written as okay let me call this gy to be z first okay so we have z equals to gy any g of y when you say actually because y when you go fx okay now takes up so this in turn can be written as so you bracket hot in direct bracket la hota hai we can write this as this as well now you bani ko chhi kyo you the circular means this is composition of two functions so this is function gof okay and if you see here carefully i am getting gof on x equals to z right now this x lies here in a and this z lies in c when this also acts like a function which 
takes x and gives me z so that's why my x lies here and z lies here so that's why this graph is a function from a to c okay so if you have understood this then we have understood our composition of functions now let me give you one example of finding golf or you can find fog also okay so but from the different of definition for fog will be something different so this can be written as f of g of x okay so this is the way we write golf and fog okay is that clear Okay, now for example, let me take fx to be x square and gx to be sin x. And if you are supposed to find fog and golf, let's see how to find. So fog of x means f of gx, right? Okay, and fx is equals to x square. So if I call this as x, then this becomes x square, right? Okay, and what is the value of x? x is gx. Okay, now what is the value of gx gx is 3 sin x so this can be written as 3 sin x and outside we have one square so 3 square is 9 and this is sin square x so this is the value of fog okay now similarly we can find golf as well so golf okay so we have golf of x can be written as g of fx okay now if I call this fx to be x, then we have g of x and g of x is 3 sin x, but x is fx here, right? So let me put back the value of fx now. Now fx is equal to x squared. So this is the value of golf of x. Now, if we understood this much, then there's a very important theorem which says if if the functions f and g are continuous at a point or at any interval here it is mentioned only the point but it can be any interval as well then the functions f plus minus gx okay that means the addition and the subtraction of two functions the multiplication of two functions the quotient of two functions provided g of x is not equal to zero and the composition of functions are also continuous at x equals to c so this is a very important theorem and we need to remember this theorem for solving some of the problems okay not only this i would like to mention few very important or special functions which are continuous all the time okay and those functions are these are special functions special functions so one is trigonometric functions trigonometric functions for example sine x cos x tan x so all these functions are continuous okay and next is polynomial functions so they are always continuous so you need to remember them now if i ask you to draw what are the uh, diagrams or what are the graphs of trigonometric function you already know from last year's trigonometry classes okay and if i ask you what is the polynomial so polynomial can be written as some ax is square bx plus c this quadratic expression this is also called polynomial okay and if i put any power okay so x to the power n b x to the power n minus one and if it continues this is also one polynomial so all these are also my continuous functions okay so pause the video to note down the important points and after that we'll have a look at a very important problem okay now let us see how to prove this kind of question so question says fx equals to this mod of this function is continuous at x equals to pi now yanira i'm going to take two different functions okay let me call u to be u to be mod x okay so it is u of x so this can be written as u of x equals to mod x okay and v of x to be sin x plus cos x takes up now if you see here carefully as i said earlier sin x is a trigonometric when you see your key answer this is continuous okay and since this is also trigonometry you can continuous 
You have any continuous? This is also continuous. And we know that the sum of continuous functions is also continuous. Okay, no? but see, obviously, V is continuous. Okay, now let us see whether u of x is continuous at x equals to pi or not. Okay, so to check to check whether this is continuous or not, we need to show that limit x tends to c. C is pi here. So we need to show that this is equals to u of pi. Okay, now so let me check. So we have limit x tends to pi u of x can be written as our u of x when you go this when I say we have u of x when you say so I'm a mod of x so let us put the value of pi so we, when I put the value of x to be pi then I have mod of pi and what is the value of mod of pi this is pi okay now let me find what is u of pi now u of pi when you got the answer when I x goes on my pi log i pi so we have mod of pi which is equal to again pi so clearly we see that since i am getting pi and pi here both are equal that means this is happening one no therefore u of x is continuous okay now so we saw that v is also continuous and u is also continuous okay now now i'll show you something out here so i am going to find um u of v of x which is nothing but u composition vx okay so this will be equals to our u of vx when you see li my x when any but u of x when you got the answer mod of x and x when you got this v of x and what is v of x v of x when you get it we have v of x v of x equals to sin x plus cos x okay no? so that means u when you get it when i this given function fx when you get it when i read u of v of x for it okay no? so you made one array and this is my two so from one and two fx can be written as u of u composition v x okay also u pani continuous sir v pani continuous sir means see composition of two continuous functions also continuous means see f of x is continuous okay so therefore f is continuous at x equals to pi so pause the video to note down